this junk? Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> what have we done? Hands. You know, you said that, uh, Mike, the first episode when I was editing, you're like, the first thing you hear is like, what do I do with my hands? Like, really quietly <laughs> under your breath. <laughs> Funny. Nice. And here we are, 60, 60 episodes later. It's a session 61. This is 61. Yeah. That's, That's pretty, pretty uh, amazing. We're, really we're on is. the march to 100. <laughs> <laughs> we're in the march to 500. Yeah. Some of these characters may even make it to session 62. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I I have my concerns. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Speak, speaking of the uh, what we were talking about a second ago, the uh, armor for the sidekicks, I've got on my character sheet like three extra sets of armor. <laughs> so and you have you have what's on Emmy's armor? Did you end up putting that on? Yes, I don't remember. Yes, oh, spiky yeah, stuff. Three L's. Yeah. Trails on it. Plus one yeah, that was spike a magical plate. full plate. I mean, that was... Hoth armor. Yeah. Like, that's, the, that's the best armor you're going to see for a few levels. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I don't even know how the, how the uh, price works on that. Because it's 1500 for full plate. But for uncommon... Uh... So armor's rare. Oh. oh all all think, of the money. I think armor's rare or... Either armor's rare and weapons are uncommon, or vice versa. I can't remember which one it is. Ar armor, one armor is more rare than weapons. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. That makes sense. Because it's a huge bump. Well, like plus one armor class is a huge bump in this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, I know why? Plus one yeah. plate. I think is. I think it's rare. I'm pretty sure it's rare. Rare. And but, but you, you know why the economy works out that way, right? Because people with magic weapons and not magic armor die. And so their weapons re-enter the into the uh, the market. People <laughs> right. with magic armor, the, they, they're still alive. They're still wearing it. Yeah, they've survived. It's a, 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 <laughs> heirloom armor. Heirloom armor. That's right. You pass it down. That's funny. And plus, I think. So I, the, what's your armor class with the shield? Twenty-one. Uh, with the shield. Yeah. Twenty-three. That's too oh, high. Gross. <laughs> it's, it's, what have I done? It, it is definitely not too high. <laughs> and, and and what is your weakest saving throw? <laughs> Strength. Yeah. Karaz. Ah, nice. Plus you have the cloak, which adds armor class and all saving throws. Yes. Which I hadn't actually realized that, but you know, it makes sense. Yeah. You have a ring too, don't you? No. You have a no ring. rings. No, no rings. cloak. Okay. Uh-uh. Char Charisma is not Farazhan's lowest saving throw. I'm going to go with intelligence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> neat, neat, neat. yeah. It's not as bad as an, a, oh, an alligator, but it's bad. <laughs> Alligators are pretty smart animals. I think they have a poor <laughs> take. I was listening to that to the most recent episode of that one. And uh, the alligator rolled a negative seven total on the on the uh, intelligence save, and I was like, "Yes." Oh, that's right, because the mind sliver. <laughs> and I already had like a minus four. Yeah, yeah. And I think I rolled a one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fantastic. That's a pretty bad roll. So I, I I have a banter question for this week. Uh oh, go for um, it. <clears throat> We we might be going into a into a, a suicide mission slash last stand situation. Mm -hmm. So does does anyone have a favorite uh, from from media a favorite last stand or a favorite suicide mission? Hmm. I mean, do you count like the trench run to destroy the Death Star in Episode Four? That was that was actually my first thought when I thought about this this yeah. question. Because so. they're thinking, I mean, that's kind of a suicide run, like little starships against the Death Star. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's really well shot. Like it, it uh, you don't most of those characters you don't even know before that scene starts, and you kind of learn who everyone is really really mm -hmm. quickly, and then it's they true. start picking them off in ways that feel emotional. I hadn't thought about that. Porkins, he goes down. Yeah. Like, who's Porkins? Before that fight, you've never heard of Porkins. Nope, you know? never heard of him. Wow, nope. I never thought about that. I just he came remember. from behind. <laughs> Jamie, I, I, you got anything? 
I'm thinking about it. Last I kind of hope that put Porkins in. Uh, I hope that's shown up somewhere <laughs> in uh, Rogue One. Somewhere, you know, like young Porkins, like. Uh, oh. Maybe you can't he's because not quite Porky. Because he was, he was spoilers. He was, he was Piglickins <laughs> at that point. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> Porkins, <laughs> you know, something quite not Fork. Yeah, not not quite there yet. I, I, so my first thought was episode four and the, the Death Star run, but when I thought about it a bit more, I think my favorite one might be Young Guns, when they they will get trapped in the house and the the Confederate army shows up to try and get them out. Um, yeah, that's that's, that's a chest fan, out. Yeah, that's a fantastic scene. I I love every minute of that. Gandalf, so, none shall pass is pretty good. That's, yep. that's that's a good one. That's a good one. So I don't know if you're going for like pure success or not, but nope. um, <laughs> what about uh, Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid? Fuego! Yep. Fuego! <laughs> my the the first one that popped to my head um, was uh, Davy Crockett, King of the Wild Frontier, and that's a that's a pretty. Uh, I don't know. Have you guys seen that movie? I know you guys were always asking me if I've seen the movie, but is that something? I saw it a long time ago. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm not like, sure. We're talking like 10 years old, long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was one of the ones that, you know, was on repeat <laughs> that we had. So I, I'm, I'm looking at my sound stuff. I don't hear myself. Am I sounding okay? Is my... Yeah, you sound fine sound good yeah okay. i think so i've got some sort of setting off i usually can hear myself in my own ears and i'm not it's a little off-putting but it's not terrible but so I, I, when I, I i i did a little bit of research for the question because i kind of went okay this is my answer what other answers could people give and what what kind of hints could i give people uh -huh. and according to the internet the correct answer is mass, mass effect 2 um because when i search uh. for Best suicide mission, all I got was walkthroughs of how to save as many people as possible in Mass Effect 2. <laughs> <laughs> Just so, like up until like page three of Google, that, that was all I got. Now I, I to specify them all. in cinema. <laughs> yeah, I ended up saving them all, but I did all their side quests. So that's, I mean, that's kind of key to saving them all. That's, that's fair. I, I, I did find a couple for you, Mike. Um, and, and a couple of these, I, I think. I think some newer movies may qualify for this. Independence Day mm -hmm. with uh, uh, Russell Case. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Serenity with River Tam. Yeah. That was a good one. That was a really good one. Yeah. Kick it, kicking the, the medicine bag back in mm -hmm. as the doors closed. That was <laughs> a great scene. That was pretty, pretty epic. So. Oh, Saving Private Ryan. I mean, yeah. Yep, Tom Hanks versus Tank. That's <laughs> yeah. That's on. I, I, sorry, that's a movie that I've never seen, but I've seen the other two. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Um, the Wait, I, two I, what? Independence Day and Serenity. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was like, is there like a part two and three to Saving Private yeah, Ryan? Yeah, there's they're Saving Private Ryan, they're Saving <laughs> Lieutenant Ryan, and they're Saving Sergeant Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> Putting Private Ryan back in danger. Saving Private Ryan again. <laughs> right. Private Ryan saves Lieutenant and Sergeant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the quest for more money. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, uh, did, did someone say Rogue One in there? That's most uh, I don't think so, but that's a good one. Uh, yeah, yeah, that 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 is a good, very good one. So, without spoiling anything, has anybody seen any of the Kenobi episodes? Yes. No. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for them all to release. Uh, I'm also what? waiting for all the uh, uh, Stranger Things to release to just take a week and binge that crap. So yeah. I've not seen anything. So, but I'm I'm. Very much looking forward to it. There was a, uh, I forgot. There was a video game that was produced for PC and uh, whatever. It's got the the redheaded kid from uh, Shameless, and he's the Jedi, and he's got the little dude on his shoulder, and 
he runs through and um again without too much spoiling it's got the inquisitors in it which mm -hmm. is according to the previews that i've seen what they're using in the kenobi which is fantastic because if you look at the canon talking about darth vader going out and killing all the jedi mm -hmm. these are the people that he used to do it so i'm i'm, I'm assuming that the storyline is kenobi you know it's obviously the 20 years between luke's birth and luke the 20 years old and a new hope but like his dealing with all these Jedi just being assassinated and murdered throughout the galaxy and his reaction to it. So I'm, yeah, fall, fall I'm in hoping order. I'm close. Fall in order. Yeah. Yeah. I That was a good game. And it had a lot of good... Uh, I, I keep using the term canon, but like a lot of new information and, yeah. and adding to what you assume or what you've heard of like the storyline, but they're adding meat to it. So I'm kind of looking forward to seeing the uh, the uh, I, Inquisitors in action. Yeah, I, I have mostly enjoyed Kenobi. Um, one of the actors in it is um, Rupert Friend, and he's he's one of my favorite actors. He was in uh, Homeland. Showed up as Peter Quinn, Quinn, Quill, Quinn. One of those. Um, Are you sure? <laughs> I think one of those is Star Lord, and the other one is is the guy that Rupert yeah, Friend plays. Quill is Star Lord. Um, Star Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. So I'm pretty sure it's it's Quinn, um, and he was under so much makeup and prosthetics that when I saw him, I'm like, I know you, I know you from something. And then when I looked him up, I'm like, Oh, it's Rupert Friend. I love Rupert Friend. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah, I haven't seen uh, Fallen Order, but I've I've seen like bits and bits and pieces of it, and it just just enough to kind of you know know that i need to play it uh but i did i watched the opening cinematic and it's it's fantastic the uh it's it's a great game yeah and and i i need i need to play i've got it i've got it on steam and i just I haven't sat down and played it uh but i have watched the first three the the three episodes that are out for kenobi and yes yeah. just yes <laughs> so the fallen order there's one particular scene which they use the music from the who the 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 Chinese like uh, death metal band H U. Oh, the Mongolian. The Mongolian. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mongolian. And yeah. Because th what they were looking for was they were trying to find some sort of alien like heavy metal, and nice. that's what they came up with. And <laughs> they actually hired the Who, and by the end of the day, they came up with the song that they used in that car in that uh in that cartoon that Same. game, and it's it's fantastic. I mean, it's obviously the Who, but like it's just so alien in what they've done with yeah. it. Yeah, that's good. And then the end of that game, there are some things that happen that just make you go, "Oh, Star Wars!" <laughs> I mean, it's like it's so so well done at the end. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I won't go any further than that. That's that's I, it's appreciated. I it, it I was actually looked up how long it takes to play the game, and it says focusing on the main objectives is seventeen hours. <laughs> seventeen. Yeah, seventeen hours. Yeah. And if you if you str if, if you're a gamer that strives to see all aspects of the game, you're likely to spend around 31 hours t to obtain. I say, I spent about 30 hours to beat that game, and I tried to get as much as possible. Yeah. It's like see everything, do everything. Yeah, about 30 hours. I don't know. If a game doesn't require, like, over 100 hours to, like, hit the nooks and crannies, I usually don't play them. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a short game kind of person. <laughs> Speaking of the hue... A who the they did a cover of Metallica's "Sad but True." Oh, really? It's really freaking good. <laughs> Sad but true. Really but good. They they are really good in general. They yes, are. They are. They are. They're but sad, sad, sad but true, and the original Mongolian is uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty darn Blake good. Like <laughs> Genghis wanted it. Yeah. <laughs> They've also. They, uh, uh, They've they've done collaboration with uh, Lizzie Hale from Hailstorm. Yeah, yeah, they that was song. A that's a really good one too. Song, woman, song of the woman, something. Song of the woman, yeah, the woman song, the song of the woman, something like that. Yeah, it was just a good, good, it's good, well done. I don't know, Cowart. Um, he was he was saying that his, um, uh, his his last stand movie is Rain of Fire. I think yeah. that's I think that's the right one. Um, yep, but I, but. I don't. I don't know. I, for some reason, I, I, there's a little twinge of a thread of a memory that 
is there a sequel or is there like another movie that's very very similar to it uh, there's maybe similar i don't think there's a sequel though <laughs> yes rain no. of fire too a lot a whole lot rainier yeah. but uh, still raining fire. still raining fire is is there one is isn't there i don't know a newer movie that's similar I, the the imagery in my in my head is like is like a skyscraper with with dragons flying around it i was thinking there's another movie that was similar to it but i don't know well the final scene of rain of fire is they go to london and you see just this massive horde of dragons flying around the city and there are skyscrapers and things. Okay. Um, yeah. But I think what Coward's talking about as far as like the whole, you know, what we're, the topic we're talking about is when Matthew McConaughey jumps off with a freaking fire ax and attacks <laughs> a dragon. Like, Oh my God, you know, pure barbarian. That was a great movie. And I liked his character yeah. in that movie. That was, that was pretty cool. Had a d- disappointing performance at the box office, which is why there was no sequel. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh. <laughs> it made made eighty two million on a sixty million budget, which is apparently not good enough for for Hollywood. Yeah, only twenty million dollars. Yeah, only twenty million. Yeah, only made twenty two million dollars. Well, the the thing you have to remember is normally the the budget that they report doesn't include marketing. So, yeah, it didn't make twenty two million dollars. <laughs> I was I, that that remind that 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 another another one of those random memories there's there's like the budget for the movie and then you just add again the budget for marketing like it's you know 60 million yeah, then it's another it. 60 million and then that's what they have to you know that's the number they have to beat to to actually turn a profit but you know. yeah <clears throat> so speaking of budget the budget for this episode went <laughs> way beyond what i expected <laughs> All the uh, special effects, the gaffing, and uh, <laughs> scenery, the set design, uh, costuming. It was just ridiculous. Um, I did go back and listen to last week's episode. And I got to say, as a DM, I was impressed by your reaction. How the team, how the, team, how the, how the players, the characters work together to not get absolutely curb stomped by a lich. You know, you walked in there, you saw the danger, and you realized this danger is dangerous. And you Just backed a little out. danger. Yeah, <laughs> slight <laughs> danger. But you, you, you did your strategic retreat. You backed, you know, bears on, taking his time, stepping back, making sure nobody gets through. You guys keeping line of sight, your henchmen sitting back in the back, waiting to shoot whatever comes around. Like, it was just... I'm not used to seeing that with player characters in D and D or whatever. Like it just doesn't happen <laughs> because most games like bad guy kill, uh, run. No, this was not we the could, time for that. You guys we, we, had, Go we ahead. could afford to be more dumb when we had a cleric. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and it may have been to your best interest to not have the cleric, Oh man! but you know, you saw this tremendous a- adversary who was, I mean, Good or bad, he wasn't killing you guys, but he was doing all the offensive stuff. You guys were not reciprocating. You were just getting smashed and smashed and hit, and you were just trying to back up, and just these firebolts coming out of the darkness over one after the other, spells flying, like the runes around the room, which I want to clarify, they're not on the walls. It's just like these hovering uh, runes would light up every once in a while. Um, just the eeriness and... The the, omnis, the the omnis of this layer. I'm glad you took up, or I'm glad you picked up on the fact that this was a really really bad bad guy. <laughs> so you went back to town, you rested, you recouped, you gathered your forces, you checked with every source you had, you got your stuff together, you got it ready to roll, and I just want to drop you right back down. Into Tarlacar's fortress. Um, I also resummoned Pazel. Okay, good enough. Uh, I think there was one last thing. Um, there was one last thing that I I thought of after we after we. Uh, oh yeah, uh, you sent me a message. There was a potion because i remember <clears throat> Verzon got potions of protection from good and evil and i'm trying to remember what the other thing was 
Well, you asked for a potion of giant strength. Was that it? Oh, well, that was the thing that you mentioned uh, off air a couple of days later. You're like, hey, was this available at Sky's Emporium? And yes, a potion of, uh, I want to say stone giant, it's strength 21. Okay. Which is plus five, plus five. Plus I think it's five. hill giant. I think is it hill stone, giant? I think stone. Oh, yep, th- there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Potion of hill giant strength. <laughs> hill giant? Okay. It was the plus 21. And yeah, um, she had a, um, she did have a single potion of, of available and it was 200, so 2,000 silver pieces. Okay. And that was with the discount. Normally it would be 250. Okay. Um, completely available. And she did mention, you know, if you ever, if she, if you're ever looking for a potion that she doesn't have, Weir's Elixirs on the other side of town, that's all he does. He has potions of every kind always available because he makes them himself. And if you remember correctly, there was a town crier that had an advertisement for Weir's Elixirs. Maybe 20, 25 episodes ago. So <laughs> don't forget. Yeah. Go to Weir's Lixers. Right. I have an important question about the potion of Hill Giant Strength. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, it has a fingernail floating in it. That's huh? yeah. do, you, do, you, do you swallow the fingernail? I think it's it like the worm. It up. Is it like the worm in a tequila bottle? Do Let's you, say do you that? it's like the worm. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's interesting. Uh, <laughs> a friend of mine and he's so a friend of ours, a uh, guy named Jason. He had a birthday, and he went to – there's a, uh, a new bar in town called the uh, Space Bar, right? And it's tiny. You walk in. It's all black lit. They get all these these uh, bright fluorescent lights everywhere. And it's kind of a higher-end bar, so you're paying like $13 American for a drink. Mm-hmm. And one of the first drink he ordered was a Pangalactic Gargle Blaster. Bless you. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, straight out of uh, Hitchhiker's Guide. And I asked him if it felt like a, what was it, a piece of gold wrapped in a uh, wrapped in It's a brick like or... having your brain smashed out with a slice of lemon wrapped slice around lemon. a large gold brick. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, he said it actually tastes good, but the drink itself, which was a kind of, a, uh, he said it was gin and something else, but it also came with a flower on top of it. Okay. And what you're supposed to do is take a petal and chew up the flower before drinking the drink. And what it does is it, it changes your taste buds to where every drink feels like your tongue has got some sort of static electricity. Yeah. So every drink kind of has a little slight spark to it. Huh. Even the, he said even, even the air for about five minutes had this little uh, twinge of uh, electricity whenever you breathe in and breathe out. <laughs> totally highly recommended. I, I never would have thought to go there and do that, but... It's it's definitely on the list now. I'm gonna have to go get me a, a pang galactic gargle blaster. That, uh, that that's what happens when you chew the petals of a coca plant. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> coca plant. <laughs> well, I asked him if acid was you know. Oh right, was right, a, right. Was it a leaf dipped in acid? He's like, no, it's you know just. I don't know. Uh-huh. Maybe this coca plant. He said it's cool. That's uh, I like cool. That's the I'll same be- folks that do token right, and and Bitburger. Yes, They're just, I don't know about Bitburger, but Token. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bitburgers. It's all the same people, but uh, as far as to, as far as Token is concerned, but that they're eventually just going to take over that whole entire strip mall. I think at this yeah. point. Yeah. They, well, they're doing something right, you know. I mean. Yeah. Good business brings business, so. Yeah. Well, they're they're attracting all the nerds. <laughs> which. Nerd. Yeah, which means I can't wait. For right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, I spent like. Uh, I got I got a five dollar roll of tokens and all but I don't know fifty fifty cents or all but two of the tokens went into the uh, Star Wars pinball machine last time I was there. You know, thinking of drinks and nerds, the thing that comes to mind, Matt, you'll remember this. I I don't know if, I don't know if you're there or not. So we had a friend of our we, we played Magic the Gathering a lot in college, and um, we had a friend of ours who had all of like it. original cards. Oh yeah, like. All of them. It was oh, just amazing. Yeah, Henry. And he was really good. He was he was fun to play with. I mean, he'd sometimes he'd use the cards and just like annihilate you. Other times he'd you know he'd he'd play to have fun, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, we were playing one time, and Matt, were you there when somebody knocked over a drink? Oh, oh no. yes. Oh yes. Oh. Yeah. The most he, rich reaction I've ever seen. 
he's a French guy. Because he just he still goes, oh, oh. He just looked at, oh, just complete surprise. Like, <laughs> it's so, not so bad. Oh, it was a whole bottle of Pepsi. Oh, yeah. man. And he, I mean, he made that a thousand dollars a card easy. Oh, we're talking Power Nine mocks, oh, Black Lotus. Like, this guy had all of that. Yeah. Oh, I I hurt for for yeah. what'd you say his name was Henry? Henry. Yeah. I hurt for now, Henry. Granted, these were at the time these were still available in packs. It wasn't like it is now. Like it was still during like beta and reserve. You could still pull these Power Nine and all those you know all the power cards out of packs, but still you know. He had a full four set of everything. Dang. Yeah, it was just. Oh my god. Yeah. Dang. Yep. Twenty nine minutes of procrastination. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Tw- tw- yep. Twenty twenty eight <laughs> for twenty eight for fifty five. Nope. So I rolled a seven. <laughs> okay. That means we should get started. <laughs> okay. Then. Okay. All right. <laughs> so you do have the potion. Right. Okay. You, I, I placed you here just arbitrarily if you want to start somewhere else before you get started, but you've gotten to this point without any kind of, uh, of I'll take uh, it. Incident. <laughs> um, you're in the back layer, the back area where all the undead were, where all the stinkiness was. And when you get back here, it's just as stinky as it was. It's still rotten flesh, uh, you know, putrescence, a, a, a lot of burnt flesh because you ended up burning like 20 bodies. Before you left last time, um, and the uh, you still ha- you still hear the smoldering, crackling flame of the uh, zombified T Rex burning in the room to the left. It's still, you know, the big body still burn for a while. A little warmer in here, kind of moist and gross. What are you gonna do? At this point, you've had no buffing, you've had no prep. Like you're here. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, so no just, spells have been cast except for Five Familiars, but you've got that. Just so you know, uh, most likely any potion that's a buff is going to require concentration of the person who drinks it. What? Yes. So I don't know about potion of strength. Uh, if you would, just take a look at that, look it up, see if it does require concentration. I would be surprised if that one does. Doesn't say so. Yeah. yeah. I don't see that. Um, so, some potions that... But potions that like emulate a spell, mm-hmm. they're gonna require a concentration just like the spell does. Dang it! <laughs> I thought that was the point. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so the potion of strength, you're good; it won't go away. Um, but you do have to worry about con- you can't concentrate on two separate effects. As far as I know, potions still work that way. Definitely, scrolls do for sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I don't think the potion of protection from good and evil, like that spell, does require concentration. Okay. I was going to say I don't yeah. see it on the I don't see it on D and D Beyond. So. Okay. I, is it still? It's changed. It's so different than what it used to be. It's not like protection from good. It's like protection from dragons and demons and. Like well, all the things, you know. The you, the relevant yeah. item is undead. Yes, yes. Yeah, the the, so, the spell is protection from good and evil, but I don't know what the actual spell or the thing is. I'm gonna go around the room okay. and tell me what you're gonna do to get prepared. Like you know you're going to the fight. You know there's a lich in this other room. It's the whole point. You went back, got prepared. Um, any buff spells going up before we go in? Well, I'm going to cast a tech magic because um, he may have laid down more of those traps. Okay. Tech magic. Those, yeah, those no glyphs problem. hurt. Yes. So you're concentrating on the detect magic. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tarathia, any other buffs? Anything? Well, it's concentration only. Concentration. Is there anything else you're going to do? Yep. No, 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 no. That's, that's, um, I had some level three spells left over last time, so I've recharged my blowtorch. Okay. No problem. <clears throat> Tarathiel, anything you want to do in preparation? Yeah, I was just checking the because um, I've got a, still got a potion of invisibility from Trakthar's way, I think. Um, but that does require concentration, and I think I'm better off with a shield of faith potion. So I've got two shield of faiths and two scroll of dispel magic. 
Um, in order to cast the scroll, you need to actually know the spell, right? It has to be on your spell list. You don't have to, yeah. Okay. Like you don't have to have it prepared, but it has to be available for you to prepare it. Yeah, which I don't have a spell list, so I'm going to hand those over to Keldun and hope that that works. <laughs> it does. I know that spell quite well. Awesome. Um, so I have two scrolls of dispel magic. Uh, oh. I can hand out another potion of shield of faith if anybody else is going to get in to melee range. It just gives you a plus two bonus to AC. So, oh, I. But guess... it requires concentration, yeah. so it won't stack with the protection from good and evil. Okay. Yeah, the the protection from good and evil is probably the best buff you can have right now, because of the anti charm and disadvantage. Yeah, it has disadvantage to attack you. That's right. Mm -hmm. Um, I I have advantage about being charmed, already. Right, because being an elf. because of an elf. Yeah. So it wouldn't stack. So yours might be better to do the. Uh, uh, protection uh shoot the plus two the armor class the other and question. then the the other thing that i've got is a wand of healing that i got from the starters of fell uh, anybody can use the wand right correct does not require attunement it has seven charges and they're d uh eight plus two per charge right. Same i'm gonna hand that off last one you'll possibly be crumbling i'll hand that off to sakura <laughs> so you have two wands of healing at this point you already had one on the party yeah and you yep, did return one it. that you uh, that they're wanting you to return uh, based on your living. Yeah, and the the wand of healing is uh, that works at range, right? No, it's oh. touch. Yeah, it oh, it's touch. touch. Pure light wounds, which is touch. Pure light wounds is a touch spell. All right, I'm keeping that then. <laughs> <laughs> shunk, shunk, shunk. Uh, it's a little dimmy. Uh, I'll, I'll drink a Shield of Faith potion, and then... Alright, so Shield of Faith it. has a duration of one minute. So, before we get into that, because I want to give ten, you... Ten, ten minutes. Is it ten, ten minutes? minutes? Oh, never mind. Yeah. You're good. <laughs> Alright, Shield of Faith. Bears on. Did you do anything? Uh, to prepare. Yes. He's drinking a potion of Hill Giant Strength. Okay. And... That's that's awesome because that's a twenty one strength for an hour, and then um, uh, downing the potion of protection from evil and good is the is the potion. So, just to be one hundred percent clear, what does protection from evil and good do? I'm glad you asked. The person casting it. Uh, the protection grants several benefits, Matt. Uh, okay. Creatures of those types. <laughs> Uh, which are the types of aberrations, celestials, elementals, fey, fiends, and undead. Ding, ding, ding. Creatures of those other types have disadvantage on attack rolls against the target. The target also can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed by them. If the target is already charmed, frightened, or possessed by such a creature, the target has advantage on any new saving throw against the relevant effect. So, remind me. I'll let you know if it's a fear effect or whatever information you need, but remind me, or at least keep up with the fact that I'm at disadvantage and you have advantage. So, okay, because uh, I'll forget. Because there's a lot going on in this fight. Yep. I've... Now, when you cast that spell, oh, the the potion is probably the same. It gives you that list. You pick yeah. which items of those lists. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't have to be all like you. You could say, you know what, angels can do stuff to me, or or whatever. You know, right. you, you can kind of. You can pick which ones are affected. Yeah, yeah, cert certain type. Yeah. All yeah. right. So un undead, definitely. <laughs> and how long does protection from evil and good last? A uh, ten minutes. Ten, ten, ten minutes. minutes. All right. Uh, so it's uh, not a uh, combat; it's a buff. Yes. Yeah. So no real, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, no real concern about it running out before combat ends. Yeah, and and if uh, it does. Something's wrong. I bought three of those, so I've got two more of those if anyone wants one. All right. Do either, so, would either of you like one of those? You know what? I'll hold one. Okay. Just in case either I need it or I need to administer it. Yeah. Try a heal? <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll take one. Okay. I am marking Go them off my list. 
good. These are the few views. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so. I'll also chuck Psychic Whispers on, and it will last for six hours. So if we're all still alive then, I can re-up it. Rest of your life. <laughs> all right, I have re-darkened the area. Fog of War is back. Ah. Go. Go. <laughs> all right, I'm going to disappear onto the ceiling and hide and stealth my way forwards. Give me a stealth check. Do, 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 An astronomical do, do, do. stealth check. Um, I have to detect magic up, yes? Yes, you do. Tw All right. 26. It has a 30-foot radius. And I, I've thought a lot about it. And like I agree that it's able to do what we're talking about, just detecting uh, magic glyphs and whatnot. But detect magic doesn't actually work the way we've been doing it. <laughs> You have a presence. You don't know where it is. Even if you concentrate, you do not know where this magic is. So, unless it's visible, right? It can unless, give yeah, an aura. unless you can visually see it. Yes, absolutely. Uh, like a glowing rune or something like that. So, when you get within range, you will sense something, but you don't know where it is. Okay. Unless and as of right now, you, yeah. you have not sensed anything. Okay. Um, then, uh, yeah, I would like to be. Stealthy. Okay. Paris and, on, are you being stealthy? Yeah, I wanna I'm gonna hang back and let Tarathiel be stealthy and quiet and peek around the corner. Okay. Fares on, give me a stealth check at disadvantage. Okay. Um my my thought was to just have Tarathiel tell him, you know, when to move forward. Okay. Uh, so, you know, he's going to kind of just you know, say when to step, basically. All right. Uh, you want the so, stealth check? Um, no. From there, you're fine. Yeah, he's. But like, if you're staying on his heels, mm -mm. I need to know what your stealth is because you're in full plate armor. Yep, yep, yep. No, he's gonna stay. You know, just <laughs> if you can hear me, tell me to stop. <laughs> you know, <laughs> sort of thing. Just uh, take that full plate armor off. You'll be fine. <laughs> No problem. So, <laughs> so good. Yeah, not not a chance. Caldun, you're still hanging back. I'm gonna move up. When he moves up like that, I'm gonna I'm gonna move up some. And Pazel and the henchmen. Yeah, they're gonna follow along. Like a band name. What is going on? <laughs> Pazel and the field mice. So Terathiel, as you come around the corner, uh, you get a better angle, and you see three of the zombies that you saw earlier that were very much dressed like your henchmen. Um, mm -hmm. They are standing shoulder to shoulder at the at the choke point of uh, Tarlacar's entrance. And it's obvious they do not see you. Uh, Tarathiel? Come in, Tarathiel. Gotcha. Something, something dawned on me. Um, I think that he could see you when you were hidden. Okay. I don't know if he can see invisible, but I get the feeling that he can see in darkness as if it's normal. And if that's the case, you're not going to be hiding in darkness. Just keep that in mind. Correct. If you are not in darkness, and I don't care where you are, you're hiding in plain sight. Yeah. You cannot do that. So he was probably, not, I don't know that he can see invisible, but if he can see in darkness as if it's normal, then hiding on the ceiling won't work against him, I don't Correct. think. Because there's nothing to hide behind. You know, mm -hmm. there's no darkness to shape, to, to mask your presence. Yep. And so now that you've uh, started thinking about that. There's stalactites on the ceiling. Not enough to stand behind. Not enough that would, uh, like smaller ones. Because this is more of a, a lava flow. All this stuff's been melted. So anything that's started forming within the last couple hundred years is just little nubs. All right, so there's no stalactites, no stalactites. Fairly slick, not slick, but like fairly uh, slick smooth. looking as though it's been smooth. Um, but yeah, now that he's mentioned that, you, you know, I mean, you know how to hide. And you realize if you're in broad daylight standing on the ceiling, you are just like holding a beacon for everybody to see you. And you figure that's exactly how he saw you last time. 
Mm-hmm. If I could give you inspiration, I would give it to you again, Heath. <laughs> that was a good call. <laughs> Very good call. Uh, but he's still got to look up, right? I mean, last time he was working pretty intently on something on the on the bench. Last time, so. the thing that was working intently was an illusion. He was invisible, staring at you. Mm-hmm. Well, it's too late to drink my invisibility potion now. <laughs> he could swallow upside down. I mean, astronauts do it. It's a concentration <laughs> issue. Oh. Yeah. yeah, it would be a, it would knock out the shield of faith, basically. But where um, you are now, you feel like, I mean, obviously those three zombies have yeah, he's, not recognized you. He's not going to see me until I go in, at the very least. All right. He set up some kind of zombie guard right at the front door. I don't think we're going to get the drop on him. I think he's going to know we're coming. I want to move forward. Can I detect any magic? Do not. Okay. Wrong one. Alrighty. Um, can I see any evidence of any sort of physical traps? He hasn't laid a tripwire across anything. Give me a perception check. Do, 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 do. 16. You do not see anything. Any landmines or anything? Um, no landmines. <laughs> I, I'm just wondering if I should drop the lieutenant's guard in front of these things and then get you guys to draw them in. We can do that. 30 foot radius? Yep. We certainly could. I'm, yeah, I'm, right, I'll do that. I'm happy to draw out it. the fodder. I'll shoot them. I'll shoot them. Braum, bring them out. Yeah, if they can walk through that square, then yeah, otherwise I was just going to drop it there. So it's 10 feet wide. You've got it covered. Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no problem. You pull out Lieutenant's Guard, bonus action, toss them down there, and they magically go into the right position, and they do not flinch. Yeah, Are you ready? I get the impression maybe these things don't have autonomy. I think he just controls them. <laughs> yeah, that he probably does, and he probably also uses them to bolster his own life. Like if he can do that black tether to a zombie, then these are just like walking hit points for him. Like a battery, if we had any concept of what that meant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've got a magical ward, so it's almost kind of like that, right? I mean, he'll like latch on to something and it like makes him more difficult to hurt. Um, anyway, other horrific thoughts. All right. <laughs> bad, 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 bad. Mm -hmm. So, uh, do you want, you like me to do you want me to get their attention? Well, I guess if they can't see you, you might as well. Hit them when it hurts. I can move forward. They'll surely notice my presence. Yeah, you're a difficult one to miss. Yeah, all right. I'm I'm gonna throw a psychic dagger into this one's face. Push them. Then we'll see what happens. Yes. I know what's gonna happen. I know. I know. <laughs> Quiet, can you. I, can I guess? Oh shoot! I didn't. Uh, my initiative is 12. Hang on, I gotta fix the end of the end. I'll tell you what's not gonna happen. Us going first. <laughs> <laughs> well, last last week's isn't any kind of indication, you know. As long as we've it's... enabled the GM rolls poorly uh, setting on D and D Beyond and Roll Twenty, <laughs> <laughs> but now that I've now that I've mentioned it. <laughs> well, again, last uh, last week I was rolling pretty poorly. That worked out to your uh, to your advantage for sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll allow you to keep doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> All right. All right. Who got above a twenty? It's gonna be a while. Fifteen to twenty. Keep going. Oh my goodness well, gracious! No, keep going. <laughs> Ten to fifteen. Oh my god. 
I think Keldrin said 12 before. 12, right? I'm a 12, yeah. You're 12, okay. And Pazel's 10. Pazel is 10. <laughs> Alright, guys, what do you got? Uh, 7 for Terathiel. 10 for Zon? 5. Yes! <laughs> Amazing. We get second mover's advantage. <laughs> we got this, eventually. <laughs> At some point. Alright, so. This is effectively round one on the assault of Tarlacar, the Lich's Lair. I don't like that you've named this. Khaldun. <laughs> yes. So, okay, we're going to do the attack first. So, uh, Tarathio, you get a free attack before round one even begins. It's not even initiative yet. You attack and then we start initiative. All right. Do I get advantage on this attack because they don't know where Absolutely. I am? Absolutely. Yes. All the advantage. 18 to hit. That's a hit. To do 20 total damage to this 20. guy. Good lord. <laughs> it tilts, but does not teeter. It's doing the Michael Jackson lane? Yes. <laughs> it starts to move on. 20 points of damage. Okay. Now, we're going to initiative order. Um, <laughs> it just so happens, all the zombies go first. <laughs> Of course, you guys are on like negative fives. So, <laughs> slower first, than zombies. Um, Achievement unlocked. I'm gonna I'm gonna say you attack this one because it's the clearest line of sight. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I will. I'm gonna move forward. That is a dexterity saving throw to avoid the caltrops. Is that right? D6 15. Uh, I can never remember that. Hang on. It's a fail. Um, whatever it is. So <laughs> yeah. I know it, it stops for sure. It takes, takes a point, a point of point damage point. and it stops. Yeah. Okay. I think it's movements reduced. Reduced uh, by half until it's healed. But uh, it's reduced to zero this turn. It stops immediately. It stops immediately. Walking speed reduced by 10 feet until it regains at least one hit point. Okay. Second one on the I bottom. Don't what, I don't know what happens if it hits yeah. multiple. Does it keep getting that reduction? Uh, I'm going to say no. No, it doesn't seem like <laughs> It's already got uh, cantrips in its foot. Can't have more cantrips in its foot. So this one's gonna. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting over some really bad allergies. The one at the top. <coughs> the one at the top, the one that you attacked, who's teetering on death, is gonna try to move through. If it fails its dexterity check, it's just not gonna move. Okay, yeah. like it can't get through the zombie in front of it. It won't take damage. Just kind of just gonna bounce. Um, and fail. So it just doesn't move. It's sitting there, tries to move forward, it can't. Uh, and you also see two more coming around the corner out of your vision. Um, and that's it for them. Caldew. I know how this song goes. <laughs> Fireball formation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Let me see here. What can I do? Need to do some measuring. Oh, oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. I love it. Thank you. Make the zombie Frisco or fricassee. That's fricassee. it. Fricassee. 10, 15. Ouch. Oh, Caldoon, I could see something nice 55, for your birthday. 30. <laughs> okay. Wait, where are you going? To whom it may concern. <laughs> boom. <laughs> boom. <laughs> yeah, to boom. Signed. 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 To boom it may concern. <laughs> <clears throat> Episode title, if we did such things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that takes so much creativity, effort, and time. I just can't do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm impressed. Episode one is enough. <laughs> oh, Glass Cannon, their episode titles are... <laughs> impeccable. I mean, it's so so good. Yeah. Uh, so. I I'm gonna I run up forward like that, and I'm I'm gonna dodge. Moving up, taking action to dodge. Yep. No fireball. All right. Not he's, yet. Nope. He's. Yeah. <laughs> I I know what, I know what you're doing. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? 
Um, uh, let's see. A jar is like, hey, wait for me. And he is going to dash. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, five, six. And he's going to take a shot at, um, well, does he have a clear shot? Uh, I'm going to see it like remember. No. Uh, okay, I'm going to try to, okay, I'm going to back him up a little bit to there. Yeah, there just go. a little bit of cover, but you yeah, get a shot. All right, he'll, yeah, he'll take a shot at that one. All right. We'll do some 20 rolling. Um, <laughs> what are they, plus five to hit, right? Plus four. Oh, okay. Plus Seven. four to hit, plus four to damage. Shooter! I've been researching the henchman. Mm -hmm. Eight points of longbow damage to the face. The roll, you have to roll the hit first? Yeah, I got a 17. Oh. I didn't see the 17. It was 13 points. Right, yeah, so I rolled a 13. Gotcha. Yes, that's a hit. And eight points of damage. That's the one that's a little hooky footed, but otherwise has it taken damage. And it clunk. Takes the damage and obviously it's a zombie does not pay much attention to it. Obviously. Okay. It says, uh. Hazel. Gross. Hmm. Hazel, what are you going to do? Hazel is going to move. I don't want her to die again. I'm gonna, she's going to come up here and she's going to hang back here and look for something to eat. <laughs> Trathiel, it's your turn. Uh. I mean, the ceiling's tall enough here for me to get over these things, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're you're a good twenty feet up. No. No. Yeah. You're not even range of being able to attack. I was about to say attack of opportunity, which is not a thing, but but you're fine. That's that's twenty feet to there. Can I? What can I see from there? I'm just gonna run over their heads. Twenty feet to there. How much do you see everything? Everything. Everything. Except for what you don't. See. Except for what you don't see. You see down this crevasse. Ooh, the crevasses. Do you see him down the corner? Yep. Okay. Don't believe it. It's not him. Everything is open. <laughs> he's open still, still working on whatever it is he's working on, right? Uh, he appears to be... He is not working on it. He's facing your direction. Yeah, I figured he would be. Dramatically. The thing, I'm wondering if I need to pick up the Caltrops because it's going to impede the party more than it's going to impede them at this point. Take a running jump over the uh, over the Caltrops. Can we see them? Caltrops you should be able to. They're just Caltrops. Yeah, you could probably jump over them. I think we can just hop over them. With right? a 10-foot run, you can run, you can jump your strength in, right, in, in uh, distance. So yeah, yeah clear both. five feet, no problem. But there are zombies standing on top of them, so that's hard. They're both muscly. Well, you would have to get through the zombies anyway. Sure. Um, I saw him being an illusion before. Would it take an action to figure out if this is also an illusion? So you'd have to interact with it. Tell it a knock knock there's, joke. There's no saving throws, things like that. You have to, like last time, you threw a psychic dagger at it, which is by yeah, definition interacting with him. <laughs> Let's um, do that again. <laughs> Let's do I, that again. Man, I think that there are some illusion spells that you can do an intelligence check to determine, but those are specific illusion spells. Does it say it in the casting of the spell? It's in the description of the spell, yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to check a psychic dagger to me. All right. Roll. So I think I've got a pretty straight line of sight there. Yeah, yeah. you're good. No clear. Yeah, completely clear. We're supposed okay. to be hitting the red button. Psychic dagger, the red button. Uh, it's an 18 to hit. 18. As the dagger approaches its face, quickly a shield <laughs> appears in front of it and it glances off the shield. Ah, interesting. Uh, cunning action to dash, disappear back into the room. <laughs> Brave Sir Robin. Uh, back to there. Alright. Anything else? Uh, and then Sakura will come up. 
to there. That's 30 feet. And I'll just have him dash. So he'll end up just around the corner from Kaldun. All right. <laughs> Next is Evil's turn. All of the evil. You see him move up away from the table. Um, let's get some distance here. <laughs> Super convenient. <laughs> right? Yep. And first thing that happens is... Blue? It goes inky black between you and him. So you can no longer see him. Mm -hmm. And from the darkness, a bolt of fire comes out towards you. Uh, which right? which you? So there are many years. Uh, so I'm sorry, Tarathiel. The attacker <laughs> upon him, he is attacking yep. upon you. Uh, okay. What's the range of fireball? 120 feet, yeah. So you're within range. And he will try to uh, burn you alive. From a distance. Uh, let's see. 18 to hit. 18 just hits with the shield just, of faith. Just hits. From a distance. <laughs> For eight points of damage. Fire I don't like damage. that. Fire Fire damage. So, so here's a fun question. Can I technically see that coming? You can use your evasion, yes. Okay. And I will do the, the I, uncanny dodge. You would have to be like use... blind or a sneak attack or something like that for you not to see it. You seeing the fire well, go yeah, bit towards you? Yeah, yeah, you got it's, it. It's 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 coming out of the darkness. I, I can see an argument that I wouldn't see it in time. But sure. cool. No. If yeah, I you got if it. I can see it, then I will uh, halve that damage. Okay. By dodging at the last moment. So you only take four from the fire. The darkness yep. is dropped, and it is now Fairzon's turn. The darkness is dropped. Um, Placed. He Placed. has dropped a darkness. There's a darkness globe there. Oh, oh okay, all right. Because sorry, I thought, he, I thought you meant the spell went away. Oh no, no, he he dropped a globe of darkness. Fire bolts came out of the darkness from beyond, and now it's Farazon's turn. Okay. Uh, Farazon moves forward, and with the light on Khaldun, um, he can see the well, and his torch in his pocket, uh, could see the uh, the zombies. But everyone stand, yeah. and like standing. Everyone standing back. So, uh, in the psychic whispers, he says, "Do you have a plan, Khaldun, that I should stay back here?" Um. Well, I was gonna flamethrower him, but that glow of darkness is a little bit of a bigger issue. Matt, Matt, uh, did I see him cast a spell, or does glow of darkness just he cast a spell? Yeah, cast a spell. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna do something about that darkness. Okay then I will take care of these zombies in front of us. Okay. And that's 30 feet, unfortunately. So I was trying to see if I had a hey, way. Choppy. Nope. Choppy and throwy have been chopped and thrown into the last combat. So They're already in there. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm just hoping. This is actually the, the mission to retrieve Choppy <laughs> and throwy, really. Oh, that's <laughs> why we're doing this. That's why we're doing They are right here <laughs> in the midst of the zombie horde so you think i, I thought you were gonna say he's like he's got them up on the wall yeah he's, he's like he's nails like, driven yeah. through them actually there's a monkey holding one of them ah no that's a that's a terrible idea stop that <laughs> and one of the zombies is holding a juice box um <laughs> so he i mean who said no <laughs> I think the only only viable option here is to take a dash and step forward to y'all. Yeah. So that that is what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna hold on to my reaction just in case those things start start breaking through. All right, what are you? <coughs> sorry, what are you wielding? Uh, right, <coughs> uh, right now he has got the shield and the flail. So so there's no. Stopping them if they move forward towards you. Uh, they, <clears throat> uh, I can't stop them from getting the the one one more um, with the with the pole arm. Uh, You're not using a pole arm, so you can't stop them ten feet away. Correct, okay. correct. They they can right. they can they can move. 
Um, but I can... No. What's the Sentinel, when I hit with a reaction, it, it drops them to zero, so they can't move any further. So, yeah, like, so you'll be able to take one step forward. Yeah. And that'll right. be it. Yeah. Right. If you hit them. <coughs> which you should. What do you mean, if? No. When you hit yes, them. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, I think that's it. <coughs> Round two. And you hear that crackling dark energy come out of the darkness, and this one, this zombie right here, mm -hmm. is has that uh, tether you saw that attached <laughs> to Rethiel last time. Sneaky bastard. <laughs> and it's hey, now the zombies' turns. He's doing it to them. He's not doing it to us. Yeah. Yeah. This one moves forward. Traitor Caltech. Does that provoke? Um, I'm not sure about your. I, I, I was. Need to check to make sure because I think one of those is dependent on wielding the pole arm. Um, yeah. That's what it I thought. Is. You're wielding uh, like a, a melee weapon and a shield, but a mason yep. shield. So, all right, it steps forward and takes a swing to brain you, and definitely, definitely misses. Um, wow. Y'all still see the Kyle trips? I put them on the map layer. Yes. Sure. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. yes. Yes. And the second one steps forward and attempts to brain you because it likes brain miss. And the third one, being stupid, steps forward into the harmful death area. Uh, failing it, saving throw for Dex. And believe it or not, that last point of damage was enough to make it have to make a saving throw to <laughs> remain on its feet. It had <laughs> one hit point left. So, it steps on the Caltrips. However, it does not fall. But it does stop. This next one steps up into the Caltrips. Fails, takes a point of damage, and stops moving. And the last one steps into a conga line and goes no further. I know the name of Caldun. I know the name of this song too. <laughs> Caldun, it's your turn. <laughs> it's so tempting. <laughs> it is. It is. But you know what? It's not going anywhere. <laughs> so uh, I take out one of the scrolls. All right. And I read it. All right. <laughs> throw the energy at the um, Sphere of Darkness. Okay, what are you casting? I'm casting Dispel Magic. Dispel Magic. Uh, it's a level 3 spell. It automatically goes away. So it's like it reveals like the threads of magic. And when I see the threads of magic, I reach out mentally and I start snipping a couple of the strings until it just poof, collapses. Now, if I'm not mistaken, if you cast a spell magic on a spell that is third level or lower, it's automatic. Automatic. Mm -hmm. All right. So you you see Tarathiel back in the corner. Tarathiel. <laughs> Telecar. Okay. I just <laughs> I, I envisage Keldun unscrolls a piece of paper and shouts in a booming voice like a stick of butter, a quart of milk, and wait. <laughs> That's the wrong one. Crap. Wrong this one. Is me. Again, he said it was dispel magic. <laughs> Who gave you this? And a Joe uh -oh. Dirt DVD. <laughs> <laughs> and then a jar is going to take a shot at one of the more damaged zombies. Uh, the one that is directly in front of Fairzon is definitely on its last leg. All right. Uh, no, I'm sorry. This one, four? the one behind, the one right behind it is. If that makes a difference, this is the one that hit the caltrips and almost fell over. So, 10. 10 to hit is a hit. Okay. For 10 points of damage. 10 points of damage. Uh, it does not fall. It, like, it takes the hit, stumbles a moment, but does not fall down. Okay. And he's going to stay put. Hazel? Hazel? Oh, can, we, can we skip Hazel until you say otherwise? Um, let's... You... let's Let's keep bringing her up, because okay. otherwise I'm going to forget her. Sure. Uh, but she's going to stay put. We'll never right. forget Puzzle. So then it is Tarathiel. Tarathiel. I really, I really want to go and disrupt the, the Death oh, Wizard. Goodness. What is this? I'm just opening stuff up. I didn't realize you. Ah. Oh. <laughs> we that thought we were against the wall. Everything. <laughs> yeah. 
actually. That's probably a lot of Guys, why are we sending their face? How about that? <laughs> you see all. All right. Who who left thistle back there? Is this? Uh, you did. I did? Oh, <laughs> thanks. Okay. You were driving thistle. I forgot. Uh, Trathy will move 30 feet back into the room over the heads of the zombies and toss another psychic dagger in this guy's face. Take this, and this, and one of these. That's a 12 to hit, which probably won't hit. 12 is a miss. <laughs> that's, that's a terrible damage roll. Yeah, it's a it's really like, lucky it missed. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of one. Yeah. Really, in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> yeah. That is a lot of ones. Wow. How high up is the oh. ceiling? Uh, 20 to 30 feet, depending on average, so call it 20 feet. Can I drop to the ground without incident? Um, define incident, but you'll take some damage. You'll take well, if I, damage. If, I, if I take damage, I fall prone. Is there any way to avoid that? Land on a zombie? <laughs> Make them take you, the damage? You can do an athletics to take one die less, but you'll still take a die. So you, yeah. you will still effect, effectively drop and go prone, which takes up half your movement. So falling is a free action. <laughs> Funny enough. No, I know. I know. What it, <laughs> basically, what I'm, what I'm looking at doing is I'm 30 feet away from where Talaka <laughs> is now. I kind of want to just run up to him and drop to the ground so that then I can be disruptive. If he tries to cast anything else, I can take a reaction to hit him. Okay. But if I do that... Now, because it's thirty feet away, it's gonna. I'm gonna take falling damage, and if I take falling damage, I'm gonna land prone, and so I'm gonna be stabbing at his ankles. Which you know is still available as an action. Yeah, it's not great. But... <laughs> Ankle damage is still damage. But remember, <laughs> when you're on the ground, you are taking. Uh, it will have advantage to attack you with melee attacks. Yeah, if I'm on the floor, that, yes. it's, I, I don't. I don't. Oh, want that. Prone, if you're prone. You're prone. Yes. Right. Yes. Let, let the zombies hit the floor. So have you already moved? You've you did move yes. forward. You've already moved yep. one act. You moved your move action. Okay. I've I've, mo I've moved my entire movement. Uh, I've used an action, so I still have a bonus action left. I mean, if you cutting action ran back to the wall, I mean that's you know five feet over, twenty feet down, five feet back over. I mean, you'd be about where you are, right? Just well, yeah, I'm actually just thinking of running into where he is and just keeping him occupied for a bit. Oh, okay. I'm not sure I want to go toe to toe with the lich. Do a little Irish dancing on the on the ceiling. Yeah. Oh, How about that? the hey? You only live once. Fine. I mean, it's a lich by definition. He has lived twice. I'm gonna run, I'm gonna run to there on the ceiling. That's okay. my my cunning action will be a dash. So I'm now adjacent to him, but 20 feet up. You're, yeah. So we can we can reach out and touch hands, like that oh. famous painting. <laughs> <laughs> Docking. Anything else? Uh, I wish to live, but no. Otherwise, um, Sakura will go. You have one of those necklaces. Is dropping that a free action? <laughs> I. I do. I don't think it would be activated. Fair enough. And also, I would now be in its radius, so that would be bad. Okay. We'll crouch on the seat. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, Sakura will come in and just take a shot at this one, I guess. The one in front of Fezan. Alright. It is... This is DA plus four, right? Correct. That's an eight to hit. That went, that went that, that's a D eight. You rolled a D eight. Yeah, I know. Oh. Uh, wait, I rolled a D eight. I rolled a D eight. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. What am I doing? That's a hit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We we want we want better. Oh, Actually, yeah. an eight's a hit. So we didn't realize that we seven. We said it. We said it on on um, insane difficulty before we started this fight. Yeah, for all right. of our attacks are on D eight. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh my god. <laughs> All your D20s are not D4s. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> a 7 <laughs> is actually a miss. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so, you know, a good day. But he's also fighting into, firing the melee. He's got three friends there. And, yep. You know, a lot of action going on. It is a miss. 
Uh, that's it for Tarathiel. It is now the Lich's turn. And it moves. Ah, I'm moving everything. Oh, the furniture. God. The furniture comes to life furniture. and attacks you. <laughs> he moves back <laughs> and. Whoop. Another orb of darkness. Dang it. Drops. Oh no. I'm right in the middle of it, <laughs> folks. <laughs> yes, it is inky black darkness, and you hear him casting on top of that. Uh, does a 16 hit? No. Okay. Hooray. You feel the heat from fireball, fireball, fire blasts coming by your uh, left hip. <laughs> uh, that, so let me look. Let me do my accounting because there's a lot going on with this dude, real quick. That. That. Mm -hmm. I think you've already used that one, Matt. You can't use that one again. Sorry. Oh, this. <laughs> Uh, Carry the one divide by seven. Hey, there's a lot to do with. <laughs> That's okay. Quiet, you. Well, I, <laughs> while, while we've got a second, uh, Dr. Foe and Constrictor, welcome to the stream. Glad you're here. Oh, yeah. Show up to watch us die. Yeah, yeah. This, this... Dr. Foe was here early on. He was here, like, in the earlier episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, two, yeah. Been around. Yeah. I haven't seen, uh, seen them in a while. Try the card. Cast a spell. Cast a spell. Darkness. Okay. That is his turn. Fair zone. It's your turn. Yeah, just, just keep marking things off the list, Matt. That's fine. Uh, is is do I, do I go before Fair zone? <coughs> yes. No, Khaldun, you're actually at the beginning of the round. Fair zone's dead last. Yeah, you dispelled the, the original the darkness. The okay. darkness. And then I ran in. So it's it. uh, zombies, Caldoon, Pazel, Terathiel, Evil, and then Fairzon at the end. Okay. Yeah, he's 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 uh, batting cleanup. <coughs> uh, so Fairzon is uh, since he doesn't have reach, he's just going to start with the either of the two in front of him look worse off than the other. The one beside you is worse off. Okay, he swings at that one Direct, directly beside yeah. you. Yeah, he's going to take a swing with his flail and his new twenty-one strength, or a twenty-six. Uh, uh, just barely, just, just barely, barely hit the hit the thing. Just, yeah, yeah, just barely hit it just, right through the yeah. pupil, right. right through the medulla, <laughs> down the spine. Oh, yeah. Okay, real quick. There was a game. It was a, a 4X game that was about 20 years ago, and one of the races was like this creepy the kind of. The, what was it? The Sith. It was a Sith, yeah. And they had, one of the lines was, "Give me your medulla oblongata. You don't need it." Yeah. What was it in that game? Do you remember that? I, I love that game. I, I, yeah, we we played that a lot. We I can't played the I can't crap out of that. Yeah, it was cool. All right, so you did 13 points of damage, which does make it teeter and crumble to the. Uh, dead, dead zombie. A dead, dead, dead zombie. Because you recognize <laughs> this one as one that you killed uh, yesterday. And was brought back. Excellent. Uh, and then he will take a swing at the other one in front of him. Okay. This one has taken a little bit of foot damage. It's about <laughs> a, little foot, a little foot damage. <laughs> a little foot damage. All right. Uh, 17 should... That's a hit. Hit that one, and this is this is the flail. So he kind of like you know, bangs it on one, and then that's the uh, the ball on the chain kind of whips it around and just boom against the other one, uh, for fourteen points of damage, max damage. Jeez, holy <laughs> crap! <laughs> it is flail. still up, but it and it's, it's dead, yep. but still up. It's <laughs> dead, but not quite, quite, quite. Dead. Same as it always was. <laughs> yep, yep. We're not dead yet. Right. Um, I think that's all I've got right now. Um, I'm just gonna hold on to my surge and all all that other stuff. Um, yeah, that's gonna be that. Um, all right. I think the the uh, the the caltrops are behind the next. An impediment now. <laughs> okay. They're right here. Okay. So Fairzone's gonna step forward to to the 
Yeah, to the dead zombie spot. So I'll move him off. There you go. And I didn't I didn't move Thistle last time. Is it okay if I take his bring him forward to where I, I would have put him, but I forgot. Uh no. No. Okay. He, he just held his ground. Okay. He held his ground, so he is yep. going to press forward to there and then to He can there. still dash, I mean. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna bring him forward to about here. So he'll be shooting over Ferrazon's shoulder or under his under his arm when when that <laughs> when that comes around. Alright. And I think that's gonna be it. Alright. Top of round three. Everybody that's not in darkness sees the rooms throughout his chamber light up again. <laughs> ah. And is now the zombies' turn, and the three that are adjacent to Ferzon take their shot okay. at absolute zombie glory. Ooh. Oh, uh, let's see. <laughs> That's good for a zombie. Seventy on the die. Uh, you know what? It's probably still a miss. Twenty. Yep. That's a miss. Twenty is a miss. Wow. I think I have to roll. Uh, you know what? Armor class twenty-one. Okay. Twenty-three. Uh oh, miss miss. Okay, uh, and the one in the back can do nothing, so it shuts just, down. Just hear zombie claws against the armor, just, yeah. just yeah. scraping chalkboard nails. Yeah. Everybody has to make a will save or die. <laughs> it's like a banshee's wail. It's really awful. It's just bad. It's just uh, bad. But it's, that is the end of their turn. Caldoon, it's your turn. Um. So. My gnomish blowtorch here. When I yes. use it to incinerate my foes, is huh. that casting a spell or is that using an item? It is an action to activate the item to cast a spell. Does that answer your question? Okay. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I'm asking because... I don't know. That's why I'm, you know. <laughs> I, I'm asking because um, I have a bonus action spell. If I cast a bonus action spell, I can't cast a level spell. I can only cast a cantrip. But if using the blowtorch is using an item, that's not casting a spell. You see what I'm saying? I do. So it is using an item. Okay. Good. Perfect. <laughs> I am going to settle up to this moldy pile of flesh. Okay. Whip out you a blowtorch. Take aim. And incinerate all four of them. <laughs> nice. So... The 15-foot cone. That's three squares in front of me. So it's one in front of you and then three and three. Is that That's how it's, it works. It's a 15-foot cone. It's 15 feet long, which is three squares, and 15 feet wide at the end. But it's only one square in front of you. That's what I'm saying. You're not going to hit Cal uh, Ferzon. Sure. That's, that's my understanding. Ferzon, do you cone. want me to hit you? Please, no. No, I'm not going to hit Ferzon. <laughs> yes, that will incorporate... All of them. Go for it. Is that a, a hit or does so it save? That's burning hands. I believe it's a saving throw. I will tell you, Charlie. It's a strong demonstration of consent there, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see here. Spell burning hands. And then you said it's a, it's a level three burning hands. If that's what you so put it, into it. it. It is, yeah. Right. Uh, burning. Burning enemies. It is deck save. Um, does it use my DC or the item's DC? Uh, we're going to use yours. 18. It, it saved. The first one's saved. Okay. It's, Your DC is 18? I'm pretty sure it is. Let me look. 16, maybe? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's 16. Okay. All right. Can I get it? So still, he rolled a 19. First one, uh, well, actually. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, what is, is the bonus? Garbage. All right, the first one still saves. Uh, that's this first one. What's the damage? Is it save or suck, or is it half damage? It's half damage. Damage. Iron, iron damage. Eighteen, 18 points of flaming death damage. Hmm. Fail and fail. So the first one saves. The back three take eighteen. 
which causes this one to stumble, 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 and die. Nice. This one took half damage. Take this one out. And these two, okay. That's what you got left. They're all burnt very, very crisply. Yes. Uh, but they're still on their feet. And Ferzon, uh, you burnt some whiskers off his face. Some warmed you up yeah, a little Some, some of the, the, the flail is now on, on fire. It's, it's a flaming, flaming flail. That would be cool. All right, let's see. Five. Five. As a bonus action, I'm going to cast Misty Step. Move. Right. Uh, let's see. I love Misty yeah, Step. One of my favorites, it's really. 5, I mean. 10, 15, <laughs> 20, 25, 30. And then I, I, I move one square, so I have five squares left. Okay. Um, so I'm just going gonna, gonna to walk up to the edge of this black sphere here. And stare at it intently. <laughs> oh. um, then a jar is going to snuggle up to Thistle here. Hey, buddy. And then take a shot at Dot Zombie. Hey, bud. How are you? Okay, go ahead. Hi. And, oh my gosh, the conversation was just so enthralling. <laughs> Hi. It's like, it's like those people that get real cocky and shoot an eight ball but miss it because they're looking at you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that just happens. That's a miss. Okay. This is the scariest and possibly last day of my life, he says. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we here? I know we're getting paid, but this is lit, right? I don't know what this word means. Uh, okay, I'm done. How's that? Mm, okay, so she is going to swoop around down here. And All right. she's done. Trathiel. Oh, I don't know. I can't see anything. <laughs> Matthew's gonna back out. Okay. Go back out to there. I use really? a bonus action. Yeah, yeah. No, but I need to come that far because I need to be within 20 feet to lift the caltrops. Gotcha. So I'm gonna use a bonus action to lift the caltrops off the ground. All right. Shredding that. the zombie. That's a, that's. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, it goes we gotta, through its face. We gotta go. I don't think it would notice. Um. I know what I want to do, but it's too early to do it. I think <laughs> the uh, the rocks that are piled up at the top of the cavern there are those tall enough that Tarathiel could drop down to those without taking damage on top of them. Yeah, they are. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, just just a thought. I'd... <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. It's a pretty big rock pile. It would be halfway. Yeah, no problem. You could drop down there. But I'm out of movement for the turn. Oh, sorry. Um, I, I've used all my movement. I've used my bonus. So standard action, I'm going to just throw a psychic dagger at this one because I can see him and I don't think the lich is going to become visible. So I don't really want to ready an action for it just yet. So you don't necessarily have advantage on this attack. You're not really... Nope. Okay. What about the one to the right of fair zone he's he's in plain sight oh oh oh, like oh right, right right yeah yeah it's well lit area uh definitely hit 14 21 to 21 to hit yeah oh, 21 to hit um and you are doing this one here correct the yep. very back okay. yeah uh it's still up it looks rough <laughs> i should have attacked the one that was standing in front of fair zone because i would have got sneak attack damage on him but i will uh Sakura will step in and fire an arrow at this one. Okay. That's a 15 yeah. to hit. That's a hit. Is it plus 2 or plus 4 to damage? Plus 4... I thought it was plus, plus two. 2. It is plus 2. 4 to hit, 2 right. damage. Well then, 4 damage. 4 damage. <clears throat> However, this one's already one that's teetering on its last leg, and it's still standing. Still standing. Friggin' still. zombies. The, ta the, the dishes are still standing. <laughs> Anything else, Tarathiel? No, that'll do me. All right, so it is Evil's turn. Let's see. Let's 
So, out of the darkness, a little bead of uh, oh, no. a little bead comes out Crap. and lands right here, exploding in a blast of fire, Crap. hitting everybody in that area with a fireball. It's fine. Could I get some dexterity saving throws? No. Uh, I'm just gonna roll and see. Dead. Uh, dead. And he cooked uh. his own zombie. This one is still standing. The one in the back is still up. I think he's evil. <laughs> hey, everyone, no except me. Remember dead. that you have inspiration. Inspiration must go before you roll. Just keep that in mind. Yeah, I know. That's why I said everyone except me that already rolled and forgot. <laughs> Remember that you have inspiration. Yes, so I'm, going, I'm going to inspire my dexterity to do better before yeah. I roll. <laughs> uh, how do I do this? Here we go. Advantage and do some rolling. Oh, I'm so glad I did that. <laughs> 17 and a 2. Yes. Very 21. Good. Okay. Save. Trathiel, you are good. Wow. Fares on. That fares on was the two. Oh, yours is the two. Fail. <coughs> and Sakuro. Sakuro is also. Let me double check. Hang on. I, I don't know what his dex is. I can roll it. Twenty. Uh, he's out of range. It's just the the zombies and you guys. Well, then I don't need to know. <laughs> you don't need to know. It's a secret. Oh my god. All right. I have, never, I have never rolled that on a fireball, ever. Fair's on. You failed your saving throw. You take 31 points of fire damage. Okay. Can I use a reaction? You certainly should. Okay. <laughs> let, me, let me find it. Where is it? I don't know where my reaction is. Is this the uh, stone's endurance? Yeah. Okay. Those who saved take 15 one five points of fire damage. Hell yeah. Max. So you, you take 16. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That worked out pretty well. <laughs> Max on the stone endurance for once. Ow. <laughs> okay, the, the, the flame whips around my shield and eats most of it away. <laughs> Khaldun, I think he's been reading your books. I think he has. Give me a moment as I do DM stuff. No, no moments for you. <laughs> uh, and also, afterwards, from the darkness, a fire bolt comes out towards Khaldun. Uh, 17 to hit. Uh, 17 hits. Um, let's see. He went... I am going to yeah I'm going to shield to block okay, it making that a miss yep alright and that is it for evil's turn thank goodness oh man I have completely been forgetting to do something which I will now start doing okay sorry guys <laughs> but it's going to start happening uh, fair's on it's your turn okay completely completely forgot. It's only round three, so not too bad, but... Something, something, lair action, something? Yes. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. something, something, lair action. <laughs> a lot something. of it. Yeah. Alright, uh, Ferzon will take a step to here and unload a flail on this, on the zombie to the south. Okay. So mo moving just a little further into the room, but with that darkness there, he definitely doesn't see any of the, uh, the lich. I'm guessing. A uh, natural one oh. for a ten. That, unfortunately, is a miss. Okay. Uh, so. Hmm. Wait, 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 wait. Hang on. No, no. I don't this is five so. e. There's no automatics. That's a nope. hit. Is it? That's a hit. That's a hit. Okay. Ten will hit a zombie. Yep. Okay. Excellent. Uh, so rolling damage. It's max damage. Uh, Fourteen points of damage. <laughs> Roll a one for max damage. <laughs> it rolls a one <laughs> and it is down for the count. All right. That's good. Alrighty then. Um, 
He he will ask in the the telepathic link. Do you have any idea where that thing is that I can hit it? <laughs> Jethro just points to the sphere of darkness. It, yes, it's in the <laughs> darkness. I'm getting ready to to try to do something about it. Okay. Uh, then he will. Ferzon will keep moving forward. Um, another twenty feet there, and. Um, Trying to think if I've got something that I can do here, but I don't know. Oh, ah, he's going to look around for his missing axes. <laughs> They're behind him about 15 feet. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's, that's, that's two items checked off of his list. Um, but. <laughs> I think I'm going to take a bonus action to. No, 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 no! I'm not going to do that right now. I think I'm okay. All right, top of round four. Uh, from the darkness, you see the crackling dark black energy strike Caldoon, and please give me a Constitution saving throw. Don't like Constitution it. saving throw. Don't like okay. it. Constitution. Check. 22. That's nice. Oh, you're fine. So the <coughs> the, uh, <laughs> the tether comes out, wraps around you, but doesn't bounces hold off on. the shield. Falls. <laughs> um, however, the tether and yank him in. Uh, that's it for zombified. It is now your turn, Calvi. Um, I am going to step down here. Dang it! I forgot to move Thistle again. <laughs> and take out another scroll all right and cast it shimmering weave of magic and start plucking at the strings to dispel it to dispel magic mm -hmm. on the sphere thank it, you very much the darkness disappears and he is up there okay Everybody can see that, right? Uh, some of it. You see him or no? Uh, there's yeah. a, there's a little yeah. bit of a the fog of war is just a Three, hanging out there. Oh, I see. Five, six. Oh dang! I'm gonna we'll walk up and say hi. <laughs> okay. Um, and I'm done. All right. Uh, Pazel. Pazel is. Uh, oh, oh, actually, hang on. At the end of your turn, uh -huh. Firebolt comes out at you and misses. Now it's Pazel's turn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Glad we got that over there. Yeah, no kidding. Yes. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> um, oh, man. If he casts another Fireball, it's going to kill her. Uh, she's going to stay right there. I just don't want her to die. <laughs> Rathiel, it's your turn. Oh, wait, wait, wait. A jar uh, is uh, going to take a shot. Okay. At the rat man. Noel. Thing. Good Noel. He is a hyena man. Thank you very much. Okay. Did you not tell by my amazing... Uh, is 15 a hit? 19. 19. Uh, shield pops up and the arrow deflects off. Okay. Just, just because I don't play casters, that, is that a, is that a limited time, limited, limited number of times a day? It's a, it's a first level spell. It's a spell. So okay. Yeah. Every time he does it, it burns. Okay. Fireball is third level. Darkness is second level. Shield is third level. And the and the fireballs are cantrips. Okay. Don't get too meta. You don't know what this guy can do. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. Well, I mean, he's casting spells that yes. I have. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Just hopefully we're draining resources of some sort. It may it may be actions or or you know pools or something, but we're draining resources. <laughs> Correct. You are. Yep. He's draining my resources. resources. <laughs> and it is Tarathiel's turn. There's more of us than there are if you impress the advantage. <laughs> um. Oh, man, I'm hurt. Tarathiel will uh, take aim as a bonus action and then throw a psychic dagger at this guy. Yeah, he just shielded, so his armor class is, well... 
23. That's a hit. <laughs> we'll do 14 total damage. Team. Yeah. Two. Okay. And then I can't move because I aimed. Mm -hmm. Let's say 10, 15, 20. Sakura. <laughs> Yelp out in pain. Sakura will come into the room, fire an arrow at the guy. They'll remember to create some kind of thing for this. 14 to hit? Probably doesn't hit. hit. He'll continue crossing the rooms that he ends up behind these rocks a little bit. So that's 30 feet. That'll do me. It is now his turn. Uh, so actually, at the end of your turn, Firebolt comes, cast Firebolt on Khaldun again. Uh oh. Uh, 22. B. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to shield it. Okay. What's your normal armor? Oh, wait, no. No, I'm not. I'm not going to shield it. No, because you want to keep your reaction. Mm hmm. I'm not going to shield it. Okay. So, uh, 11 points of fire damage. Ow. That was at the end of your turn. On its turn, it. or he. Casts a spell and where is it? Where is it? When I see him, when I see him casting, uh -huh. I look at him and I just say no. Okay, are you casting counterspell? Counterspell. All right. <laughs> yes. You <laughs> counter his spell and he fires a fireball at you. Oh shoot! Natural twenty. That's a big number. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's a big number. 7, 12, 21, 25 uh, points of fire damage from a mm. critical firebolt. 7, 12, 21, 20, yes. And it looks and it turns. When you counter it spell, it obviously looks angry and turns directly towards you, staring at you and cast that firebolt and Apparently hits your right in the uh, eye, and in, then in then very small nose. Yeah, <laughs> went straight up your nose. Uh, but that was a good counter spell because it was getting ready to move a great distance. <laughs> Bears on. It is your turn. Okay, Bears on. Finally seeing a target. Okay, and he can move forward finally, and he is going to. <clears throat> as he moves forward stowing the shield and uh and the flail to pull out his long staff uh -huh. and he will move to here and commence with the thwacking okay thwack away so all the thwacking all the thwacking so I was trying to trying to keep my defense up uh for a while you know, to keep my hit points for engaging this dude. Uh, so, yep, thwacking away, and the shield's gone, right? That or does that only affect magic stuff? What are you talking about? You have no idea. Okay. I mean, you don't know, so. Okay. Yeah, Twitter's on doesn't know. So, all right, swinging away. Uh, Sixteen to hit. Sixteen to hit, and a shield again pops up, blocking the attack. Okay. Dang it. All right, he's going to continue swinging then. Next one's going to be a natural one for a 10. That is a miss. That's a miss. And bonus action to swing with the uh, other end of the steak with a 14. That's going to miss. 14 is a miss. All right, yes. So bang, bang, bang. It just... I don't I don't know if I don't know if those things have any like I assume it's it's physical but it's not like a you know ringing out on metal but it's just you know. So when he casts it it's like his entire body's encased. Mm -hmm. And you've seen Khaldun do it several times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aside from his just natural ability of it being abjure but every once in a while he looks like a blow is going to just hit him right in the face mm -hmm. and that's the last second 
a shield pops up and deflects it. Okay. He's done this over and over again. <laughs> yeah, frustrating the GM to know it. Uh, <laughs> so, no, Tarlacar has done this three times now in this combat. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. 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 So I, I was just thinking that you know he's got the the mat the staff the long staff is magic, so you know it's hitting hitting the magical shield, and yeah, I don't know if it if it you know thematically just you know the shimmering of it, yeah, you know, it's just the the force behind the uh, the blows, you know, just I don't know if it, if you, if, you, if it would make any sort of noise or anything like that, but you know. <laughs> Ferzon is definitely frustrated, and he's reconsidering uh, uh, maybe taking a bar barbarian level here in a, here in a little bit. Anything else? Uh, I think that's going to be it. That's a move right. standard and a bonus. At the end of your turn, mm -hmm. it shoots another firebolt at Khaldun. It's not very nice. Uh, Twenty total. Do you have uh, no reaction? Nope, I'm dead. You're at zero. Yep. Okay. Uh. Khaldun falls. From the last firebolt. Oh no. It is top <coughs> of the round five. And those uh the runes throughout the room glow. And it is Khaldun's turn. Give me a Okay. Uh Pazel anything? What? Pazel. Do I need to do a death save? I did it. Oh. Matt doesn't. I don't so you don't my own you don't okay. you don't know. Yep. Can I give inspiration on that roll? Is that is that something we can inspire? <laughs> during combat. Huh? Can't give inspiration during combat. Okay, okay. Or right, spend spend inspiration. Spend, yes. Yeah, that's that's yeah, spend on that one. I thought you meant give it to somebody else. No, no, no. No. Not, not give. Spend. But the inspiration has to be declared before you roll the dice. Okay. Okay, uh, I missed it. All right, Pazel, anything? Um, hmm. let's see. Where is she? One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, she's gonna fly around the corner, right about there. Um, she can't. Yep, that's it. It's a uh, bonus action to mourn. <laughs> oh no, she's <laughs> going after him. Yeah. Heck, <laughs> his little beady eyes yeah, out. Oh, you know what? I forgot a jar should have taken a shot on my turn. Oh well. <laughs> to Raphael, it's your turn. Uh... <laughs> 15, 20, 25, 30. Tarathiel will run to this corner and then use this wall to drop down to the floor. Okay. Uh, and as he comes, he's going to pull the Wand of Healing. All right. You can pull that. And tap, and tap Kaldun with it. D8 plus two hit points. Nine hit I, points. Yeah. Not, sure. not, not dying is the important thing. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> But you immediately, like, almost before you hit the ground, because the way Tarathiel moves is just beyond definition of speed. By the time Khaldun is settled on the ground, he's beside him healing him, and your yeah. eyes blink open as you're hitting the ground. Not yet, so, buddy. Not yet. Yeah, yes. I, I, I blink, blink, blink. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Did we win? What happened? Did we win? <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and then the smell hits me. No. <laughs> not yet. It's not worked. worked. Good Yankee flesh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then Sakura is gonna step one, two, three to there. Take a shot. Okay. Fifteen to hit. That's a miss. Yeah, and he's gonna run back to his hidey hole. <laughs> <laughs> right. At the end of the turn, Tarathiel, uh a firebolt comes from Tarlacar and strikes out at. Fairzon, uh, does a twenty-four hit? Uh, with the protection, give give that uh, disadvantage. 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 Oh, good call. Good call. Oh. Uh, so twenty-four. Does a twenty-four? <laughs> yes. Hit? Rolled an eighteen and a an nineteen. Of yes, course. of course. All right. So standard firebolts does thirteen points of damage. Ow. 
And it's now your turn. Uh, no, it's now his turn. Okay. That was the end of Tarathiel's turn. So, first thing that happens is a icky, glorchy, webby, and stuff hits this entire area. You guys are very familiar with it. It's one of Khaldun's <laughs> favorites. He casts web spell ah. right on top of what? everybody. Let me pull this thing out. And that's... That's fine. Uh, Just like that. That's perfect. Yeah. It's beautiful. Tiny. Is it... Was it 20 by 20? Like it, it, this big? It's, no, no, no. It's, you had it right the first time. The second time. You've got it double sided. Okay. Yeah. How's that? Yep. And drops right there. Twenty by t the the. Uh, yes. That's, yep. So he's gonna, he's he's sticky himself. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, so the spell drops. Everybody, give me a dexterity saving throw. <sighs> I don't think prone. It doesn't affect prone? exactly. Yeah, I don't think it does. I don't think so. You, can, you can roll out of the way. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, 14. 14 is a failure. Okay. So you're restrained. So, so oh, the, wait, wait, wait. The, the saving throw doesn't occur until the they person's the turn. So when the spell is cast, it doesn't affect them? No. Excellent. Uh, then he will step Except, out. No, but it's his turn. At the beginning of the turn or the end of the turn? Or how does that work? Let me look. But the the saving throw occurs on the creature's turn that's being affected by the web. Okay. Da, da, da. Um, each creature that let's see. Layered across. All right. Each creature that starts its turn in the webs or that enters them on its turn must make a dexterity saving throw. So he entered so it on his turn. Uh, he failed. failed. <laughs> okay. Okay. So when it becomes our turn, the first thing we do is make a deck save. Okay. So it casts this web spell, mm -hmm. and immediately after that, casts Firebolt on the webbing in its area, destroying it and taking 2d4 points of fire damage. Right? For perfectly average. Okay. So if you burn the area of webbing that you're in, it, you take 2d4. Yep, so yep, that's right. Takes and then moves back. Nope. Provoking uh, from both. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Provoke. That one I'm going to... Um, and before you tell me uh, whether or not it's going to hit, I, I intend to use precision attack if, I, if, if it applies. So. Okay, all right. <laughs> uh, so with the 18, I am going to use precision attack. Okay. Um, because I know he's got he's got stuff. Let's see. I'm prone. What does that do to my attack? You have disadvantage to attack, if I'm not mistaken. Or maybe it's right. Yeah, oh, prone creature. Uh, yeah, I I have disadvantage on attack roll. Okay. Is that you? Was that a total of nineteen? Yes. Okay. So the shield spell it had cast has worn off and it does not cast another one you hit okay excellent hey. yes I haven't done this in a while so let me see what that uh, what that does um, because that's that's an opportunity attack yes yes it's a reaction okay okay so here, here's here's a, here's a question, a follow up to that, because I I, I know that I've that I've uh, done the precision attack. So let, let me let me resolve the damage, um, if that's okay. So that's nope. thirteen points of damage. Okay. Uh, now, <clears throat> the trip attack uh, maneuver says when you hit with a weapon attack, you can expend a superiority die to add to the total to the damage roll. And it has to make the saving throw or be tripped. Does that mean I can use that on an opportunity attack? So read it to me because I'm not sure. <clears throat> okay. 
So when you, I think yes, I think the answer is yes. Okay. When you, because I don't think there's a limit to the number of dice you can use. Uh, the spirit of dice, I don't think it's limited to like one per round or blah blah blah. But go ahead and read it just in case. Okay. Um, when you hit a creature with a weapon attack, you can expend one superiority die to attempt to knock the creature down. You add the superiority die to the attack's damage roll, and if the attack or if the target is large or smaller, it must make a strength saving throw. On a failed save, you knock the target prone. So the only thing I can imagine that would say no is if somewhere under superiority dice, <coughs> it says you may only use one per attack or action. Hmm. Um, but you use a reaction, you hit with the precision, which is what allowed you to hit in the first place, right? Yeah. Or you used you use the precision dice yeah, to do additional damage. Yeah. Uh, to, to, so if... Yeah. In my opinion, you're using resources to do, to add. I'm going to say I'm going to allow it. I don't know if it's the right answer. I'm not sure exactly how superiority dice, but you took a reaction, you use a superiority dice, and using a second superiority die to attempt to knock it prone. So yes. Okay. Let's go ahead and go with it. Yeah. So the attack is resolved. Now he makes the strength saving throw. Strength saving throw. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yes, in the midst of the web. So he drops webs, fire bolts the area, burns himself a little bit, attempts to run away, and somehow, amidst all this glorchy goodness, <laughs> you smack him down and knock him off his feet. Yeah, that's a that's a. He is uh, now prone that's... next to Khaldun, and they're doing you know thumb like thumb war. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. That works. Nice, nice. Oh. Very nice reaction. And uh, I do get the, since that is on an attack roll, I do get that added as damage. Uh, so that okay. is an additional seven points of damage. Seven points. So I, at some point, like before we play again, I would like to clarify that so we don't, I don't want to do it wrong. But to me, that seems right because you're using resources. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've never seen anything limiting to the number of, of security or dice you can use at one time or anything like that. So, but I've never played a fighter, so I'm not very familiar. Yeah, the the oh. um, the superiority maneuvers are are listed in kind of you know the different areas on on D and D Beyond, like um, the the repost or repost you know uses a reaction, so that's that's that one. Um, okay, but the well, let's 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 look it up later. Yeah, every, every uh, everything is under special that I did that I did there, so. But I just want to make sure that there's no limitation to the number of uh, spirited dice you can use in, in a round or specifically in an action. Yep. Yep. Right? So the, it, it spells it out, actually. Okay. It says you can only use one maneuver per attack. Oh, okay. where was that? All right. Okay, okay. So I'm going to give him the, the hit points back, and he's not prone. However, you did stop his movement because that was your intent. Right, you've got that feet. Yeah, that yeah. The, with with Sentinel, he still does stop him. So. Okay. So he attempts to step out of the webbing, uh, but your Sentinel attack does stop him. Hmm. So give yourself the superiority yard to die back. Okay. Uh, but you did strike and succeed and stop him in his tracks, which is pretty much as good enough, except that he's playing with his toes and Khaldun's using his hand, so he's losing terribly at this whole thumb war thing. Okay. <laughs> oh, I, I, I see it, Heath. Yeah, there it is. All right. Anything else fares on? Oh, that's actually, that was a reaction. Yeah. It's still his turn. Yeah. Uh, and that's all he had. So fares on. It is your turn. Okay. Now he is going to <laughs> sw start swinging uh, with the... First thing, give me a dexterity save. Okay. All right. Right, right. Okay. Dex save, nine. You are restrained, so you have disadvantage on your attacks. Yada, yada, yada. Restrained. Disadvantage. However... You can immediately take a strength check to try to break free, or you can go ahead and attempt to attack uh, with this advantage until you're no longer restrained. Okay. Son of a gun. <laughs> I want to go blender. Um, all right, I'm going to do a strength. Um, what is that, athletics? Strength check. Straight okay, strength, strength check. check. So, uh, strength check to break free as an action. Yes. Correct. Okay. Uh, Twenty-one. Oh yeah, no problem. Okay. Get off me. Yeah. Get off me. The broken Kill tree giant from strength. The, yeah. 
it's like it's little wispy <laughs> spider webs, not like Australian death webs. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, can I move him? Uh, you, have, on? you have everything else left. You have only taken an action. Okay. Uh, the the squares the squares above uh, where Ferzon is are those? I know those are kind of against the wall, but are they? Can I move? move this around? this one you can step into. This one. Not quite. I don't think you can. Okay. I think that one's mostly rock. Okay. Uh, no, no, it's open. I'm, it just looks. Yeah, you can step into those. Okay. It's half and half. It's fine. All right. So stepping to the <laughs> north. You can step out. Yep. yep. And then. Okay. Then I think that's it. That's just a little bit of move. Um, I don't have a bonus action thing. That yes. Uh, as a bonus action, I am going to. <laughs> Uh, second wind to get a little bit of hit points back. Um, if I could roll it, uh, a max on that. So, heck yeah, six, 16 points heck. back. And before I forget a 17th time, uh, Thistle is going to move forward and fire off a longbow shot against. All right. Thing that. <laughs> Or a tin. <laughs> Clinks off its shiny sh uh, sh uh, teeth. Chainmail armor. It's got riveted to its body. Okay. Right. Anything else? I don't think so. <laughs> it takes a shot back at Thistle. It's not very nice. Uh, 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 Matt. Yes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Um, just to want to remind you, Web is a concentration spell. Uh, all right, so just uh, let me just roll again and see what I got. It's DC is ten, right? Uh, half the damage. It's half the damage, minimum ten for every instance of damage. So and did only get hit once. Yeah, because yes, it was okay. a reaction attack, and he did thirteen points. Thirteen points of damage, so half will be seven, so DC would be ten. Yep. So the 10 is successful. So the yep. web is still available. Yep. And now I'll roll to hit. Uh, he, At the end of Ferzon's turn, it shoots out. He casts a uh, firebolt at Thistle mm -hmm. and misses. Yay. Top of round six, it is. Uh, at the beginning of the round, it reaches out a hand towards Ferzon. That crackling dark energy extends forth. Frazon, give me a constitution saving throw. Okay. This, this one, yeah, I was just like, like, this one is the one I'm going to spend my inspiration on. <laughs> All right. Yep. Uh, All right. That one. Uh, that's going to be. Come on. Come on. All right. It's not letting me do the the modifier on, my, on the keyboard, so I'll just roll it twice. Uh, 18. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. It hits you and just dissipates off your armor. It does not grab your soul. It's not very nice. And I do realize we're at two hours. We'll go over just a little bit, see if we can get uh, through a round. Yeah. Uh, if not, we will continue this next week. So, it is Khaldun's turn. So, deck save? Deck save for the web. <laughs> oh, Oh, right. you're restrained. I like it here. This is my favorite spell, <laughs> by the way. It's comfy. I, we all float down here. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm trying to decide whether or not I should completely go nuclear on him. Yes. <laughs> the problem is it would probably kill me. Oh, fair enough. What? <laughs> you're going to do ground zero fireballs? Uh, I was thinking about it. I thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it. Um, what? You could grapple him. At disadvantage. Oh, yeah. There's that. Yeah. Um. Hmm.
Well, given that we have such close quarters here, I am going to open a portal <laughs> okay. to a dank, dark realm of horror. Uh, oh, good. Polish. Out Polish. All right. Do I still have the creepy spider being thing for that? I think I do somewhere. <laughs> yeah, there he is, down beside the gigantic... Frog dude, where would you like it? Um, I would like to right there, perfect. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'll just and, drop it. This is perfect. <coughs> uh, let's see here. Um, okay, and then it is going to attack it with chilling rend. All right. Um, twenty-one. Oh, yeah. Nice, <laughs> nice. Okay. Kill it more. Uh, you detect magic falls because this is a concentration spell, right? Yes, yes. It, it. Well, actually, it fell when I fell unconscious. Oh, that's true. Uh, right. Thirteen points of cold damage. Thirteen points of cold. Let me... Okay. So, it takes the hit, but does not seem to be fully affected. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Is it affected at all? Yes. Okay. It does take some damage. Okay. And, um... I'm going to stand up. All right. Actually, you can't. You can't take any movement. You're restrained. You're... Oh, yeah, movement right. of zero. So you're not grappled, you're restrained. Okay. Yeah, I, so your I movement's can... zero, right? No, uh, let me check. If it's, reduced, if it's reduced to zero, you can't stand up. If it's not, you can stand up. Let me see here. I am restrained. No, you're correct. My movement is zero. I am prone and icky. You're like <laughs> floating on your back. That's the best way. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right, I'm done. All right, in the Caldoon's turn, Firebolt, fires on, miss. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Pazel, it's your turn. God, I rolled a one. Thank you. Really it's going to, okay. Pazel's going to, she's going to flap up and down, looking for a way through this web, and just stop in frustration. <laughs> okay. Uh, Tarathiel, it is your turn. Kick off, kick off. <laughs> um, I need to make a deck saving throw, right? You are Yes, you're correct. Zoom in the web, and I really don't want to spend inspiration on this, but I also really don't want to be restrained. Uh, Alright, I am going to spend inspiration on it. And yeah, for some reason that doesn't work. Oh. That'll do. Yeah, you're fine. 25. Yes, you're good. Uh, Alright, Trethiel's going to step out this way. <laughs> ah! Yeah. Oh, ugly. <laughs> not, not fun. Um, and I'm gonna throw a psychic dagger at him. He is not restrained. The web is burnt out. In yep. There. Just standing. Uh, it's a 19 to hit. 19 is a hit, and no okay. shield pops up. For 15 total damage. You do get a uh, sneak attack. Is that included? Yeah. Because Fezan and Kaldun are both threatening. Yeah. Bam. And then psychic. psychic damage to the face. And then uh, bonus action, I'm going to kill another dagger. Head on for it. Uh, yeah, that's what I'll do. Oh, Ooh, natural crit. 20 for natural. a 27. <laughs> okay. Nice. Uh, which will do 17 total damage because I don't get sneak attack on that one. Jeez. <laughs> All right. That'll do, pig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'll do. Holy crap! You just did like forty points of damage to that thing in one round. Holy crap! Where's that been the entire fight, man? Yeah. Tarathia was annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, I'm done. Yeah. All right. This has been fun, but die, 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 die. <laughs> Don't yeah, anger the roach. Much. 
All right. Tarathiel, is there anything else you'd like to do this round? Uh, I want to have Sakura take a shot as well. All right. So he'll do his usual come out from under behind cover and roll a die and then miss and then we'll move on. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh, 23 to hit. That's a hit. Oh, yeah, that's a big hit. There we go. Doing four piercing damage. It's more than more than Farazan's done to the Lich so far this entire fight. Why, and I need to check something as well. Uh, where are those things? Caltrips? No. No, no, no. Uh, we had those... Achievements. Oh, psychic... Oh, that's right. You get extra damage against intelligent undead creatures when you critically hit. When you critically hit. Because uh, lead equal to the number of dice that you have. That's right. So you should be bleeding three. Bleeding three. So it'll take three points of psychic bleed damage next round. I don't know how psychic damage bleeds, like like CSF coming out of the nose and ears, or just yep. you know, just your charisma like being drained as it's like attacking your your just brain inner being of, of your uh, awful. He's just not having a good bleed. time. And Matt, uh, please roll a couple of concentration checks. Good call. Uh, first one. What was the first damage you did? It was... Four, Fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, yep. So half the, well, it's DC 10, then. Second one was... Seventeen. 20, Seventeen. So, again, DC 10. Bam. The web falls. Yes! <laughs> Anything else to write here? Uh, no, that'll do me. <laughs> it whips its head around, stares at you, and casts Fireball. <laughs> Does it really? Yeah. I at know. End, at, I counter it. At the end of Tarathiel's turn. I counter it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice. Oh, fire bolt. I thought you said bolt. fire ball. Oh, no, no, bolt. No, no, oh, oh, fire bolt. No, 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 I don't count. But you don't bolt. know what he's casting. You have no totally idea what he's casting. So there's no bead of fire, so. Right? Well, so. By the time there was a bead of, bead of fire, it'd be too late. Oh. Yeah. Well, it's uh, a sp so it 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 Matt, Matt's right. I don't know what he's casting. So I counter spell fireball. Does it go through? It is his turn. And the first thing he does, the webbing's gone. I'll, I'm not going to get rid of it, but count it as gone. It failed its concentration. First thing it does is get the hell out of dodge. Okay, so Palesh is going to attack. It's casting a spell. <laughs> uh, it just basically teleports right here. Bamf. And that is a full spell. Turns around and it casts a spell. You already used reaction. And shoots another fire bolt at Tarathiel, missing drastically with a two. Um, it has a movement. It is bugging out. It's trying to get the hell out of here. This was like crap, 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 crap. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, what do I do with my hands? Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Bears on. It is now your turn. Uh, we stop running away. Fight like an owl. Quit hitting me. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Farazan is going to run diagonally to the southwest okay. and just so that he can keep hopefully beating on this thing with it you know actually hit it with a stick uh, so that's when he's gonna aim at the knee uh, 27 took a stick to the yes, yes. okay is that a critical uh, no it's not unfortunately uh, but I am going to uh, now that I've hit with a weapon attack, spin the superiority die to do a trip attack. All right. So strength saving throw, please. Fail. Roll the one. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. So nine points from the initial hit. <laughs> and one more from the superiority die. So, or, or uh, not nine, seven points. So eight, eight points total damage there. Okay. And he is now prone. 
You have advantage on the rest of your attacks. I have advantage on the rest of attacks. And swinging away with the long staff. That is a critical hit. So time slows down. <laughs> what a way to go. Yeah. <laughs> Smash it into the ground. From the edge of the room, after uh, Tarkalar teleports to the other side of the room, takes off running away from all these attacks, bears on leaping through the cave, lands smashing it on the knee, knocking it down, immediately rearing back and just jams the edge of his staff through the face into the head of Charlie Carr, and he lies still. <sighs> he is dead. Er. Yeah. Dead -er. <laughs> After that happens, you see a wispy form escape the body, and it looks like it's swarming around the room looking for something. And after just a few moments, a, a weird psychic cry screams out as it loses its form and dissipates through the caves. Can I determine whether or not that was a failed phylactery? Give me an arcana check. Ferrazon says out loud, this is the, what in the... 17? <laughs> That's exactly what you think happened. It was looking for a phylactery that has not been completed. And its soul dissipates. Thank goodness. Fairs on. But unlocked. You, you have a home base. <laughs> Congratulations. Hooray. And we did go a little bit long. If you're still here, I appreciate it. It's a little two minutes, two hours, 15 minutes, not too bad. But <clears throat> congratulations. Considering that we have finished this particular thing, that was we've talked about this offline. Um, we will be doing our vignettes this week Thursday night we'll be taking each character to have their individual time to do what they'd like to do in between adventuring time so join us if you like Thursday we'll be starting at 9pm Eastern Standard Daylight Savings Time just like we've done in the past each character will have their own time to spend doing things that you don't really get to do while you're doing adventuring so tune in it's a little extra stuff it will not really yeah, it actually will progress the story some, but join us, and then we are taking next Monday off. I'm on vacation. Heath is out of town. I think Jamie's on vacation. So we're all out of town. And Mike's in Australia, so basically he's out of town, too, <laughs> if you consider Knoxville the town. So we will be taking next Monday off uh, and then picking up the following Monday. However, we will be having the vignettes on Thursday night. Good job, guys! You just killed a lich. Can I can I roll yes. my can I roll my damage just to see what it was going to be? Sure, absolutely. It's seven hit points. You rolled critical, so I knew like it's dead. You know, <laughs> I was so waiting for you to roll a six. Yeah, right. right. Like, oh, it was thirteen. Oh, you know so. what? Thematically, you just won. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, crap. That would really suck. Yeah. Oh, okay. Ignore everything I just said. It's got one hit point left. It fireballs. No. Yeah. It, it, the minimum damage was <laughs> seven, but yeah, I, just, I was just curious to yeah. see what it was going to be. Very cool. Awesome. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. We will see you Thursday. If not, we'll see you in two weeks. All right. Have a good night. See you then. Good night. Sadness. Sadness.